وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على عبد الله ورسوله نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to a brand new course brought to you by Al Madrasa Al Umariya, and the name of this course is "Call on Me, I Will Answer," you. and that is, of course, taken from the statement of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, "Wa qal Rabbukum Duuni Astajib Lakum." Inna al-ladina yastakbiruna an ibadati sayadhulun jahannam adakhirin. And your Lord said, "Call upon Me, and I will answer you." Allah is telling us, call upon me and I will answer you. Indeed, those who are too proud to worship me will enter Jahannam disgraced. Wal'iyadu billah, we seek Allah's refuge from that. So the topic of this course is the topic of dua. The topic of dua. And inshaAllah ta'ala, we're going to cover in a fairly summarized way. Dua, its etiquettes its virtue, the times and places and manners of making dua, some of the things that we should avoid when making dua, the means for your dua to be accepted. And inshallah ta'ala, towards the end of the course, we're going to go through some of the ad'iyah, the duas that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to make, and particularly the ad'iyah that are jami'ah, they cover all, like they're comprehensive. They cover all the different things a person would need in one dua. And we're going to try to explain some of those, inshaAllah ta'ala. So just let's begin by talking about the word dua, the word dua. And the word dua, linguistically, uh, you find different uh, meanings for it. You find the word anida to address someone or to call out to someone. You find uh, the, some of the scholars say sahabihi to cry out or to shout out. And Ibn Faris rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, Addu'a an tumila ilayka shay bi sawtin wa kalamin yakunu mik. He said that dua linguistically is to gain the attention of something with a sound and a speech that comes from you. So you you make a sound like a cry or a speech that comes from you, and through that you gain the attention or you cause something to turn towards you. And of course, this is all linguistically, and we can't just take that and copy paste it as it relates to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, because of course we have to make sure that we say about Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala only that which is befitting to say about Him Subhanahu Wa Taala. But this linguistic meaning of dua, you can find it in Surah Al-Baqarah, in ayah number 171, in which Allah Azza wa Jalla said, وَمَثَلُ الَّذِينَ كَثَرُ كَمَثَلِ الَّذِي يَنْعِقُ بِمَا لَا يَسْمَعُ إِلَّا دُعَاءً وَنِدَاءً سُمٌّ بُكْمٌ عُمْيٌ فَهُمْ لَا يَعْقِلُونَ The example of those who disbelieve is the example of the one who يَنْعِقُ who calls out to those who do not hear anything except dua and nida. They don't hear anything except a cry and a call. Something that gains their attention, that turns them towards you, and someone making noise, you know, get calling them or bringing them. And this is the example, and the scholars of tafsir differed about the ayah, but just to give one example so people are clear, some of the scholars of tafsir, they said, that this is the example of the callers to Allah from the prophets and the messengers and those who follow them in good and the disbelievers. The prophets and the messengers call the people to Allah with the best of address, the best way of address and with the most wise of words and the most beautiful of speech. But just like the animals, the only thing they hear, they can't understand. The only thing they hear are just someone raising their voice 
and someone calling them and getting their attention. Summun bukmun umya, deaf, dumb, and blind. Fahum la yaqilun, they cannot understand. They cannot process what is being, they don't, they don't internalize what is being said to them. So the reason I brought this ayah is just to show you the use of the word dua linguistically. As for the dua, which is in Islam, then we don't really need to provide a, uh, a ta'rif. We don't need to, to provide a definition for it, but we need to highlight the part of the linguistic definition that relates to it. And that is a nida, that is to call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with khudur, with submission and humility. That's the part of the linguistic definition that we actually need for the Islamic definition. In, in all honesty, we don't need to define dua because dua is so well known that everyone, inshallah, watching this video knows what dua is that we don't need to provide a definition for it. But we do need to highlight the part of the linguistic definition that applies. And that is to call out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not to scream, um, but to call out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to seek uh, something from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to call out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with submission and humility, i.e. with in the form of an act of, of worship. Because no doubt the linguistic meaning of dua could be used for something which is worship and something which isn't worship. It could be used for something which is worship and something which isn't worship. In other words, just calling out, like we said, you know, just calling out the shepherd who calls out to the animals. The shepherd who calls out to the animals. You could call that dua, but it's not, it's not ibadah, right? It's not a kind of worship. Whereas the kind of worship is the dua which has Al-dhul, it has complete humility and al-khudu' submission and humbleness uh, in the form of that, that, you know, in the, in the sense of the act of worship that you do towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَذَا النُّونِ إِذْ ذَهَبَ مُغَاضِبًا فَظَنَّ أَنْ لَنْ نَقْدِرَ عَلَيْهِ فَنَادَى فِي الظُّلُمَاتِ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنْتَ سُبْحَانَكَ إِنِّي كُنْتُ مِنَ الظَّالِمِينَ when the Noon left the city in a state of anger, thinking mistakenly under the impression that Allah would not seize him for that, that Allah would not punish him for that. And then he called out, Fanada fi dhulumat. He called out, An la ilaha illa anta subhanak. He called out his famous dua, which we're going to come to in a subsequent episode, inshallah ta'ala, but here, just to understand that an element of dua is the calling out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the nida, calling out to Allah azza wa jal. But calling out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the submission and humility, uh, that is the part of the linguistic definition that we are interested in for the purpose of our discussion as it relates to, uh, as it relates to dua. So that being said, let us take some of the ayat of the Qur'an that tell us about the greatness of dua and that dua is the essence of ibadah. Dua brings together all of the elements that, if you like, uh, the elements that represent ibadah. All of ibadah can be found and represented within the action of dua. Let's look at some of the ayat of the Quran and let's take some of the benefits from those ayat. First of all, we're going to deal with the ayah in Surah Ghafir. وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ مُدْعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ عَنْ عِبَادَتِي سَيَدْخُلُونَ جَهَنَّمَ دَاخِرِي And your Lord said, call upon me and I will answer you. Indeed, those people who are too proud to worship me will enter Jahannam disgraced. First of all, Allah Azza wa Jal commands you to make dua to Him. He commands you to make dua to Him. Udu'uni, He commands you. And then He tells you and promises you 
a promise from Allah, Inna Allah la yukhliful mi'ad. Allah doesn't break his promise that he will answer your dua. And then Allah Azawajal tells us that those people who have istikbar, they are proud. Where did they get this pride from? Who man sanna lahum hadihi sunnat is sayyah? Who is the one who established for them this, this evil example? Iblis. Aba was takbar. Wakana min al kafirin. He refused. And he had istikbar. He was pride. He had pride. He was proud and arrogant. And he was from the disbelievers. So those people who are too proud to worship me. What do we see in the ayah? We see that Allah makes ibadah and dua synonymous with each other. In the sense that Allah uses ibadah when he was speaking about dua. In other words, those people who are too proud to worship me, those people who are too proud, too arrogant to make dua to me, will enter Jahannam disgraced. And that is a threat of punishment for the one who is too proud to worship Allah. And that is exemplified by being too proud to call upon Allah and too proud to ask Allah Azza wa Jal for help and to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in dua. The next ayah that we're going to take is what Allah Azza wa Jal tells us about Ibrahim alayhi salam. وَأَعْتَزِلُكُمْ وَمَا تَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ وَأَدْعُوا رَبِّي عسى أن لا أكون بدعاء ربي شقية فلما اعتزلهم وما يعبدون من دون الله وهبنا له إسحاق ويعقوب وكلا جعلنا نبيا سورة مريم and this is in سورة مريم between ayah number 48 and ayah number 49 Ibrahim said that I will distance myself from you and what you worship besides Allah and I will call upon my Lord. I will make dua to my Lord. I hope that I will not be negligent and wretched and one who brings upon myself wretchedness because of my, as it relates to my dua. So when he separated himself from them and distanced himself from them and what they used to worship besides Allah, we gave for him Ishaq and Yaqub, and each of them we made a prophet. And there are many ayat like this in the Quran. Allah Azza wa Jal said, فَدْعُوا اللَّهَ مُخْلِصِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ Surah Ghafir, ayah number 14, call upon Allah, make dua to Allah, making the religion sincerely for him alone. So calling upon Allah is the essence of ikhlas. Calling upon Allah alone is the, the core of example of what it means to be sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And sincerity to Allah is an essential part of your dua, that your dua is alone for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And He's the only one that you make dua to. The masajid belong to Allah. So don't make dua to anyone else besides Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in Surah Al-A'raf, Ud'u Rabbakum tadarru'am wa khufya, innahu la yuhibbu al-mu'tadeen. Call upon your Lord, tadarru'am wa khufya, in a state of, in a state of humility, in a state of submission, in a state of need, in a state of fear. Indeed, Allah does not love those who transgress the boundaries. And Allah Azza wa Jal told us in Surah Ghafir, هُوَ الْحَيُّ الَّذِي لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا هُوْ فَدْعُوهُ مُخْلِصِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ so This is ayah number 65. He is al hay it's one of the names of Allah Azza wa Jalla, the ever-living, Al-Hay. His name, Al-Hay, gathers together all of the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that relate to Him, that relate to Him. He is Al-Hay, the one that there is no God worthy of worship but Him. 
because of this, I because of the attributes of Allah and his names, and because of who he is and what he does, fad'uhu. You have to make dua to him. Mukhlisina lahuddin, making the religion only for him. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. All praise is only for Allah. Lord of everything that exists, the Alameen, all of the worlds, the world of the jinn, the world of the angels, the world of the men, the world of the heavens, the world of the earths. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Look how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about himself and then tells us that because of what you know of Allah and his names and his attributes, and his rububiyyah, and his asma, and his sifat, his lordship, and his names, and his attributes, fad'uhu. So what is obligatory upon you is that you make dua to him alone. And you make the religion for him alone, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah Azza wa Jalla said, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبُ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانِ فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُ لِي وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشُدُوا Surah Al-Baqarah. And this is in ayah number 186. And if they ask you, if my servants ask you about me, then say to them that I'm near. Allah Azza wa Jal is qareeb. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows everything. Allah sees everything. Allah hears everything. Allah Azza wa Jal is qareeb. He's near in a way that befits his majesty and his grandeur and his supremacy. And then Allah explains the meaning of this. فَإِنِّي قَرِيب, I am near. أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دعان. I answer the dua. I answer the dua of the one who calls upon me. The one who makes dua to me, I answer their dua. فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُ لِي Let them answer me. I let them uh, answer what they have been commanded to do when Allah has called you and invited you to do something, answer that invitation, answer that call. Well, you mean will be and let them believe in me. Perhaps they will be guided. Perhaps they will be guided or so that they may be guided. And Allah said, Surah An Naml is ayah number 62, which Allah Azza wa Jal said, Who is it that answers? Who is it that answers the Muttar, the one in desperate need when they call upon him? And he removes and uncovers and withdraws the harm causes it to go away, the harm that had happened to a person. And he makes you established on the earth with authority on the earth. Is there a God with Allah? Is there an object of worship with Allah? Is there anything else that answers the mutar when they make dua, the desperate one when they make dua? Is there anyone else who can remove the harm from you? Is there anyone else who can give you authority on the earth? Is there a God with Allah? Little is it that they remember. And for this reason, if a person, the more a person knows about Allah جل, and his names and his attributes and his actions, the stronger the person's connection will be with Allah جل, and the more, the, the, the more pure their dua will be and the greater their dua will be and the greater their humility will be before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the more likely it will be that their dua will be accepted, and the more they will stand before Allah in a state of desperate need and humility, because they know Allah, and they know the greatness of Allah, and they know their sin, their, their, their sinful nature, and they know how low they are in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so when they know Allah more, they really fulfill the essence of worshipping Allah in a much, much better, in a much better way. And that's why, listen to the description of the Prophets and the Messengers in Surah Al-Anbiya. Surah Al-Anbiya, this is ayah number 90, in which Allah said, إِنَّهُمْ كَانُوا يُسَارِعُونَ فِي الْخَيْرَاتِ 
وَيَدْعُونَنَا رَهَبًا وَرَهَبًا وَكَانُوا لَنَا خَاشِعِينَ They used to race each other in doing good deeds or they used to rush to do good deeds. And they used to call upon us رَغَبًا وَرَهَبًا in hope and in fear. And they were in a state of deep submission and humility before us. That's how the prophets and the messengers, as after Allah mentioned a number of its prophets and messengers in Surah Al-Anbiya, he, uh, he mentioned Ayyub, he mentioned Yunus, and he mentioned others from among the prophets in, in Surah Al-Anbiya in this, in this page. And then Allah said, إِنَّهُمْ كَانُوا يُسَارِعُونَ فِي الْخَيْرَاتِ They used to rush and race to do good deeds. وَيَدْعُونَنَا رَغَبًا وَرَهَبًا And they called, they made dua to us with hope and fear. And they were in a deep state of submission and humility before us because they knew Allah more. The more you know Allah and you know His names and His attributes and His actions, the more you will make your religion sincere for Allah and the more you'll worship Allah as He deserves to be worshipped and the more you'll call upon Allah with hope and with fear and the more submissive and humble you will be and the more humility you will have. And that's not just the description of the prophets and the messengers, but it's also the description of the believers. Allah told us in Surah Al-Sajdah, تَتَجَافَ جُنُوبُهُمْ عَنِ الْمَضَاجِعِ يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ خَوْفًا وَطَمَعًا وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ فَلَا تَعْلَمُ نَفْسٌ مَا أُخْفِيَ لَهُمْ مِنْ قُرَّةِ أَعْيُنٍ جَزَاءً بِمَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ Surah Al-Sajdah between ayah number 16 and ayah number 17. They raise themselves from their sides out of their beds and they call upon Allah at night. They stand in making dua to Allah in fear and in hope. They fear the punishment of Allah. They hope in Allah's mercy and Allah's reward. And they spend out of what we have provided them. So a person from among those people doesn't know what has been kept hidden from them, from the pleasures of the eye as a reward for what they used to do. And Allah Azza wa Jalla said in Surah Al-Kahf, وَاصْبِرْ نَفْسَكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ بِالْغَدَاتِ وَالْعَشِيِّ يُرِيدُونَ وَجْهَا Be patient, keep in yourself, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, O Muhammad, keep, be patient in being with those people who make dua to their Lord in the morning and the evening, seeking His face. SubhanAllah, the Prophet ﷺ was told, and if you wanted an evidence for the importance of being around good people, look at this. The Prophet Muhammad ﷺ was told, be patient, keep, be consistent. Keep yourself around those people. Keep yourself with the people around you. Who should be the people around you? The people who are calling upon their Lord in the morning and in the evening. They're making dua to Allah in the morning and the evening and they only seek the face of Allah. Those are the people you should have around you. So that description of dua and fear and hope and calling upon Allah and knowing Him, that's not only for the prophets and the messengers alayhim salatu wassalam, rather it is also for the believers who followed the example of the prophets and the messengers alayhim salatu wassalam. That's what Allah made easy for me to mention in this episode. And in the next episode, inshaAllah ta'ala, we're going to talk about some of the evidences from the sunnah to introduce the concept and the topic and the importance of dua. And Allah Azza wa Jal knows best. Was salatu was salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. How can you do a two second action right now that will give you a share of the reward of everything we're doing on this YouTube channel? Simple. Like this video and click subscribe. Why? It will allow YouTube to recommend our videos to other users. And imagine the huge amount of reward that could be waiting for you on the Day of Judgment if you did that with a sincere intention of spreading the Deen of Allah. You'll be rewarded for every single person who benefits from one of our videos as a result of your like or subscribe. That's an easy two second action that you definitely don't want to miss out on. Do it now, click like, and subscribe and don't forget to make that intention.